Hi there, Martin here from Jazz Beginner Guitar. I'm looking at Raspberry Beret by Prince. It's always, always been one of my favourite songs from um, Prince's catalogue of thousands of songs. Not that I've heard thousands. Um, but students are particularly interested in him at the moment um, because of his untimely death. Um, this is a good example of um, a strummy song really, if you're looking to do something acoustic by Prince, this is a great example of one to do, it's not too difficult. Um, some good lyrics, um, and it taps into that kind of psychedelic, kind of acoustic English um, world. It's what people have called his neo-psychedelic period. I suppose if you look at the video you can see it's kind of a bit Beatlesque, 60s, you know, so kind of a nod to the 60s. It is a great strummy song. Once, once you've, you get into it, um, you can have some fun with this one. Uh, it does a bit Sergeant Peppery. There's some lovely violins in there by, um, sorry, I wrote this down, Nov Novag, Novog. Sorry, Nov Novog. Hopefully, I've spelt that, said that right. Um, the violin's lovely. It really adds to that that kind of recurring theme that's kind of going on with that chord progression. So we will be um, breaking it down, looking at the song. I'll be following a song sheet, um, but I've hopefully that'll be it. Yeah. So without further ado, let's jump on in and look at the song. Okay, to the song. Um, right, Raspberry Beret. I never know how to say that. It's a, it's a, it's a lovely thing to say. Cause I always think of yoghurt. Anyway, so here we go then. So this is what I'm doing. I'm going to give you the chords. And then we can look at it as we go through. Looking at the pattern, I think, as we're going through. I don't want to break it down into chunks. Um, so basically, the song analysis will kind of go, go through the whole song sheet. I will eventually put this on my website once I finish tinkering it with it. Okay, so what do I do? At the start, I'm, I'm incorporating that violin in the guitar. So this is my interpretation of it. You play along, you can kind of, it, it hits most of the notes, it's, it's pretty accurate. And then an A chord. And what we're doing, we're playing the, the B string. We're playing the, the second fret, you know how to play an A chord. Your first finger is on D2, G2, B2, bottom five strings. Okay, in this song we're, we're using the finger on B2 to create a, a, a melody within the chord. So you get this strum, okay, pick, open, down again, and then off. You get the idea. Okay, the next part, I go, I'm going up to basically what's the G, but it's part of a G. And what I'm doing, I'm playing my third finger, and I'm hitting those three strings, or two strings. You 
can do all single notes on this, by the way. You see where my fingers are on? So I'm on B3. I'm playing three strings. So I'm grab a bit of that G. So, so far. Hopefully you can see that. Yep. And then we've got an open E. And then we come back to the B on two. Speed. Okay, so that's the opening phrase, and that covers the A and the G, where it goes. And that would be the chords. If you don't want to do the melody, you just want to strum the chords, you've got basically an A, an A, G, D. And if you're a bit more advanced, you can grab your thumb over for that D, which is on two. It's totally up to you, it's optional. So just to go over that again, you know your A chord, you know your G chord. Or do you? Okay, here it's first finger on A2, second finger on E3, and your third finger down there on the thinnest string, which is also an E, on the third fret. If you st you're working on your frets, you can just play that bottom four strings. Should I say if you're working on your chords? strum that lovely G though. Okay, so just to go through that chord sequence again, the first two chords at least. And the melody sits over that. So once again the melody. And then we move into uh, another part of the melody, which again fits over really a G chord, which is this. I slide. I quite like the idea of sliding in. You don't have to do that, of course. You don't even have to play the the G note up here. But basically, I'm trying to incorporate the chords again. So you've got I'm sliding in. And then I'm playing two on G, and then off, and then on. I'll correct that. That's sliding into G. Finishing on a B, open B. So once again, slide in. Two on G, on, off, on. And then actually a double B. You can do a single one if you want. Again, you're just kind of roughly matching up with the melody if you want to do this type of playing. So, so, so far we've got this. And then finally we're dropping into the A chord. I'll show you how to strum this without the melody in a moment. So you're playing the open B, come down, two on G, open B again, two on B. So you're basically bouncing the A chord up and down. So you get this. So up to speed you would have this. Up to speed, I'll do it slightly slower. So, okay, up to speed. Now 
that last bit, that tail end riff that I did around the A, you can do it up here. I'm pretty sure the rest of the band are following it on the, the bass lines. So it would be here. Same notes, they're exactly the same notes. There's a B note, but you're playing two on the A. On, off, on, and you're sliding up to four. And there's a little tail end there. I don't want to overcomplicate the riff, but it's it's like this. It does something like that at the end, just hammers on to five and then off again. And you can do the same down here when you're playing the A chord. I say hammer on, I don't you just put your finger down, play it, and then pull it, pull it, pull, pull the finger off. I'm pretty sure that's what the violin's doing. It's a little additional note. If you listen for it once again. Okay. So slowly through. Something like that. Put it in, it's up to you. Probably wouldn't put it in if I was playing it, it's quite complicated. Um, and the other version would be. gives you a guide that's that violin part added on to the chords that I did at the start. Uh, okay so if you want to strum it on its own it'll be A, J, D, G. And this part here will be a quick change from a D to a G to an A. Speed first. I was working part time in a five and down. My boss was Mr. McGee. Hope you get the idea. If you don't want to do that quick change, it's quite tricky. And of course, I'm catching an open chord, you can just go. She wore a G D. Actually, no, it changes a bit quicker, doesn't it? It's the same. The kind you find in a second-hand store. It's just a bit more pronounced on the chord. So, a second-hand store is a D G A. Now we've gone over all these chords. The only thing we haven't done is a D. I haven't shown you how to do a D. Okay, so a D is first finger on. Sorry about that. It's first finger on G two. Second finger on E two. Third finger on B three. Now, if you're struggling with them, just play the top two, which is the G two, the B three. Okay, you're playing a slightly different chord, but it will get you by until you get used to that shape. Okay, so the chorus, back to the chorus, it's She wore a A very G or a D Back to G The kind you find D 
second G and A stop. And again, raspberry beret. And if she was warm, slightly different here, she wouldn't G. Where D much more. Great lyrics. Well, should we say? A good, an interesting image. But that was Prince, wasn't it? Um, raspberry beret. I think I. Now here we end with an E. Love. Sorry about that. Huh? Tempted to sing along such a catchy song. Um, I think I love. So it's E. Now to make it easy, first finger on G two. Second finger on. A2, third finger on D2, strum the whole lot. I think I love her. Okay, so that is the verse, sorry, that is the chorus and the verse before it. Um, they're the same basically, with a few different fills at the end. They've got these little, little running bass lines at the end, little pronounced um, motifs that are occurring around that same structure. Okay, so, right, um, so we've got a verse, we've got a chorus, there's another verse, there's another chorus, and then we have the middle eight. The middle eight is... is a bit odd, really. Uh, it's, it's in, it works differently. It's kind of a down, 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 up, up, down, up, but it doesn't always fit that. So you, if you watch, you kind of down, down, up, so you get this... See what I mean there? There's lots of emphasising chords, which would be the melody, but there is parts where they do do certain strum patterns, like on the G, on the word kind, there was a down, down, up, up, down, up at that point, and um, before that there was a down, down, up, so, okay, so that's a down, down, up. If you caught that, that was uh, quite a lot of um, strum patterns in one or two lines. So that's how it works. You can do simple down strums if you're learning. Keep it nice and simple. So, for example, she wore a raspberry. Sorry, she wore a raspberry beret. The kind you find in a second-hand store. And if you learn, I'd advise you to do that, or do even less, so you can get through the song strumming those simple chords. It gets great practice for simple chords. You've got your A, your G and your D, and your E. Perfect for learning. Okay, now the riff. Now we're going to look at that last break, which is this, which is um, the ring. Sounds so cool when it hits the barn roof. Can you? Now that's the bit I've come up with. There is a bass line that seems to be following, but I wanted some chords because if you were singing it, it's quite hard to do the bass line. The bass line is basically this. Let me just show you. It goes D to an A when it hits the barn roof. Basically D to an A twice. And then you've got this riff which is, let me just play it, you can see that, that's open D, 2D, I bring my third finger down to play G2, then first finger grabs G1, pinky reaches over, or third, whichever one suits you, Grabs four on D. And you finish it back on two on D. So that kind of would sound like this if you weren't singing. D to an A. Riff. Plays that twice. But I thought I might like one 
might want to strum this. So I was trying to work out the chords, which was quite tricky. So I kind of matched it up with the D, kind of grabbing the A. So it's kind of like this. Um, the rain is so, so cool when it hits the bow roof and the horse. Style. Does that twice, so that kind of matches the riff. I think it's pretty accurate. Check it out. Then we get that last part, that break, is um, listen. G it goes to a G. They say it's quite tricky. Next chord is F sharp minor. Um, if you're working on this bar chords, you can do it with all that. Um, so G. They say the first time. E ain't the greatest. That's quick changes there. They say the first time ain't the greatest. I'm not going to try and sing this bit like Prince. I have to work on this myself. Um, next, so oh, sorry, F sharp minor. If you can't get to the bar chord, it's a tricky one. You could. This is you're going to have to work on this as well. This is an A bar. And. Pinky or third is going to reach over and grab D4. A bar, instead of doing that, you're going to have to work on half, half bar A and third finger, and that will get you the F sharp part of the F sharp minor. Well, you can do that version there. Okay. So, as I say, it's an E shaped bar chord, E minor shaped bar chord, should I say? Sit twice in the break. You could cover up by just doing an A. So, for example, listen. They say the grace. Mm, doesn't sound as good. They say the first time. They the greatest. Mm, could do. Doesn't sound great. I, I work on the F sharp minor personally. Get over that hurdle. Okay. So, carry on there. So, Listen, they say the first time ain't the greatest. Then we get back into that riff. But I tell you, does that twice. If I had the chance, I'd do it all again. That's that line. Then it goes back to G. This time we hold the G for two. I wouldn't change a stroke. Sorry, you hold it for a full bar this time rather than half a bar. Then F sharp minor again for a, a full bar, because baby I'm the most. Then E with a girl as fine as she was then. Which I hold for two bars at the end there. Let's check that. I wouldn't change a stroke, because baby I'm the most. With a girl as fine as she was then. Get into the chorus. So yeah, it's two on the at the end, building into um, the chorus, which then fades out on the chorus. Okay, hopefully that's explained um, what's happening in the song with the added little additional riffs. Um, as I say, there'll, there'll be a uh, a sheet to cover this on online once I've finished tapping it and doing it properly. Okay, have a great day and take care and goodbye.